My name is Kenneth Parker. I'm the United States Attorney for the Southern District of Ohio. I'm here to announce the arrest of the second suspect who had absconded in the July 6 uh, robbery of the Fifth Third Bank in Hilliard. I'd first like to start with introducing uh, the folks who are present with me at the podium. Uh, Brian Martinez, he is the Deputy Criminal Chief here in, our, in the United States Attorney's Office in Columbus. Noah Litton, who is an Assistant United States Attorney here in our office who will be handling the case. Uh, Daryl McCormick, the Special Agent in Charge of the, for the ATF. Michael Black, the United States Marshal. Also along with him is Dan DeVille, the Chief Deputy for the United States Marshal Service. Gregory Bacher, the Deputy Chief for the Columbus Police Department, and our very own, own Mayor Andrew Ginther. Thank you for being here. Um, you know on July 6th, there was a, uh, a robbery which occurred at the Buyers Imports car lot, in which uh, individuals allegedly took a Porsche SUV. Later on that day, uh, the Fifth Third Bank in Hilliard was robbed and those individuals were confronted by both the Columbus Police Department as well as the Whitehall Police Department. A uh, shootout incurred, occurred. One individual who was part of that uh, robbery, that team, uh, uh, is deceased from that. Uh, two individuals absconded. Their names are Faisal Durad and Aiden a. Jama. Mr. Durad was arrested uh, the next morning at a location here in Columbus. Today, I'm happy to announce that at approximately 12.46 p.m. at the O'Hare Airport in Chicago, Mr. Jama was uh, taken into custody by the United States Marshal Service. And thank you for that. Uh, the, there is something called the long arm of the law and it was proven today through the coordination of a number of law enforcement entities. Uh, as you see here, Mr. Jama, who was attempting to get on a flight and uh, allegedly uh, abscond to Turkey, was taken into custody. So I'm uh, very, very proud of the information sharing which occurred between our law enforcement entities. I'm proud of the coordination that occurred. These individuals have been charged with first aiding and abetting uh, a bank robbery, and that, that carries up to 20 years uh, imprisonment, as well as aiding and abetting the use of a firearm during a crime of violence, which carries a penalty from anywhere from five years to life in prison. Again, as I indicated, Assistant United States Attorney Noah Litton will be handling this, this uh, case for our office and we are, we are proud to know that. Um, we, you may ask the question, will we seek detention? And the answer to that question is yes, we will seek for these individuals not to have bond, to keep our community safe. Um, this is a case about keeping the community safe. Um, and alleged attack like this upon uh, a business which is trying to simply sell vehicles, a bank which is trying to do good in the community with the customers that to which it serves, uh, and then against our law enforcement officers who are also trying to protect the community uh, has no place, this type of activity. Uh, again, I am so appreciative of the work that has been done by the Columbus Police Department, by the ATF by the United, United States Marshal Service, uh, Mr. Mayor, and by you and the work being done with the citizens here in Columbus. These individuals are innocent until proven guilty. These are only allegations that have been raised by our office, but I am confident under the uh, supervision of Mr. Martinez with the work of Mr. Litton that these individuals will be held accountable for their actions. I will turn the mic over now to uh, Special Agent in Charge McCormick. As the U.S. Attorney Ken Parker said, my name is Daryl McCormick. I'm the Special Agent in Charge for the ATF here at the Columbus Field Division. Uh, I just want to say that on Thursday, our agents responded to the officer-involved shooting along with our task force officers 
And from there, we started a very integrated investigation along with Columbus Police Department, um, the U.S. Marshal Service, and many other law enforcement agencies. It's a tireless effort that took place a lot of, through the 24 hours uh, a day, we worked on this to get these people in custody to protect the public. I want to make a, a comment that our prayers continue to be with the officer that was wounded, but also with the victims both at the car dealership and at the bank who suffered the trauma of this robbery. And it's for them that we're out here to seek justice. And uh, I want to lastly say that uh, the investigation is not over. It's a very active investigation, and it will be for several days and weeks or however long it takes for us to, to uh, make sure that we have uh, all the information we need to make uh, the best case uh, to bring justice for all those victims that we just talked about. So at this time, I'm going to hand it over to U.S. Marshal Michael Black. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. As Ken, our attorney, U.S. Attorney Ken Parker said, I am Michael Black, the United States Marshal for the Southern District of Ohio. Um, I'm extremely proud of the deputy marshals in the Southern District of Ohio that, and our partners, both federal and local partners that have been out um, working tirelessly since this incident occurred the other day. Um, you hear me talk about our partnerships a lot and the collaboration. You know, th this doesn't just start in a critical incident. These partnerships, um, the Fugitive Apprehension Task Force, you know, we work together on a day-to-day -day basis and we're, and when something like this happens, we're able to react quickly, um, share information, share intel, share resources, and this is a result of that partnership and the continued collaboration. So I'm, I'm extremely proud. Uh, this, this is a continued <coughs> partnership and you will see this, uh, our working together, building relationships, and con continually looking to bring violent criminals to, uh, to justice. So thanks again, everybody. Um, appreciate your partnerships, and um, look forward to our future uh, relationship. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Greg Bodker on behalf of Chief Elaine Bryant. The Columbus Division of Police would like to express extreme gratitude and thanks for the collaborative effort of everyone that you see standing here with me. I shared this news with the officers involved in this incident earlier today of the arrest of the second suspect that was involved in the robberies and the shooting of our officer, and they were extremely thankful. I know that from the moment that this happened at approximately 4 o'clock on the 6th, this team, as well as everyone that works with them, worked tirelessly. Uh, we met numerous times to talk about where we were at in the progress and what we had built with the case. And I'm so grateful of everyone's work. We look forward to continued relationships and thank you all for covering this as we move through uh, the case. Thank you. Um, U.S. Attorney Parker and all of our partners, uh, just grateful for your collaboration, uh, your partnership and support. The community is safer today because of this incredible work and this arrest, um, the very heroic and courageous act of our officer who's recovering and the quick, swift action of his colleagues uh, to get him the care that he so desperately needed. The folks up here have worked together and helped to remove this threat from our community. But now it's on our shoulders. I need the community to do a couple of things. Continue to pray for the recovery of our officer, his family, and all of our officers who are protecting us in neighborhoods throughout this city. But in order for us to be able to hold these people accountable, for these investigations to proceed with the vigor and the thoroughness and completeness they need, more information and tips are needed. So I need folks to share information with law enforcement. They can do it anonymously through Crime Stoppers, text, share, call, email. Folks, we need you to step up and share information so that we get the charges, the prosecutions, and ultimately the convictions that we need to make sure we send a strong and powerful message. That is, 
If you come after our officers, you're going to have to come through the rest of the community. This community is unified behind our officers and our partners at the federal, state, and local level will continue to make community safety, neighborhood safety, and supporting our officer safety our top priority. Thank you, U.S. Attorney. At this time, we'll take any questions. Stephanie Dupre with ABC6. Um, so out of the three suspects, obviously one is deceased. Out of the three, do you know who fired the shot that hit uh, our officer? Uh, I'm going to say at this time, no, we do not, but we continue to work on the uh, investigation, to, and we'll make that determination. Is there any indication that he was already on the plane, or that after he got to Turkey, he may have been going to another country like Somalia that does not have an extradition treaty with the United States? <coughs> Uh, there's no indication of that. How was he able to leave the state of Ohio? Uh, we will we will determine that as far as how did he get to Chicago? Yes, ma'am. We will we'll be looking into. What brought the uh, Porsche to a stop? What brought the, the Porsche, Porsche to that a they stop? Were, that they were in to a stop. It is my understanding that he actually the the car rammed some other uh, police cars, Whitehall and so forth. And and we need to keep in mind, thank God for the safety of those officers. Um, and then, uh, there, as far as the chase occurring, does anybody want to answer that question as far as uh, the, the actual stop of the court? I'll jump in. Yes. Exactly what brought it to a stop, we don't know yet. Um, I can tell you there was damage on the vehicle, and so it appeared that it may have hit uh, either the inside or outside median. Were either of these two suspects part of a lar larger crime? We're looking into that, and as far as them being part of a larger ring, we're going to we're going to look into all of that. As far as looking at phones, looking at associations, and so forth, and we're going to go wherever the evidence takes us in that regard. Making a second arrest, are both of them cooperating with the investigation? Uh, are they giving you? Are they answering questions? Are your questions to them? Or I guess how are they acting now that they've been arrested? If you've had a second to, to talk with them? No, we have we have not have not talked to them. And I can't really get into whether or not they're cooperating and things in that regard, but uh, I can say that we are investigating, and that would be part of the investigation. And cooperation is always on the table. I want to make that clear, even to the bad guys. When you are arrested, you have an opportunity to cooperate. That's part of the, that's the first step to rehabilitation, regardless of if you're going to prison. So they'll have an opportunity, whether or not they take us up on that, that's their choice. But we'll prove the case regardless of their cooperation. Could they face local charges as well, felonious assault on a peace officer, uh, attempted homicide, charges that aren't available in the federal uh, jurisdiction? We would look into that as well because when we look at these type of cases, we also look at you know, which, which jurisdiction has the biggest hammer and which cases, which charges should be brought in those particular jurisdictions. Is there concern and part of the reason filing federally first that they might not get a bond that would keep them behind bars with the flight risk and having the option to hold them without bond? at the federal level to file? No, there's no concern there, and there was no who files first type of uh, thought process. It was right now we feel we're the better jurisdiction to file. Uh, this bank is uh, FDIC insured, so it's a federal matter. And, uh, you know, as the mayor indicated, we are one, one community. So if you fire at an officer or if you assault Whitehall officers, you may as well be looking at uh, having assaulted an entire community, federal, state, and local. I have a quick question about Crime Stoppers. So I was able to yeah. deduct from Crime Stoppers that once, Mayor, you made your announcement yesterday um, at Grant Hospital, you know, folks were piling in. I believe you got over $800 in donations from folks, as well as uh, maybe five to ten different tips. Did that effort from the community help lead to the arrest of this second uh, Mr. Durag? Can you speak to that, or do you... I can't speak to that, but let me say this. Any and everything that someone in the community does in a positive way to uh, help law enforcement is, is another step to the good that's done in the community and protecting the community. So uh, I hope individuals take Crime Stoppers uh, for what it is. It is a, an entity that is seeking to protect our community, to seek to... Uh, have individuals anonymously provide individual uh, individual information, I'm sorry, to law enforcement 
uh, to others so that we can enhance what we do. So. Just yeah. one more question, please. Um, I think we all, I mean, the officers in Little One know how he's doing, if we can slide that in there as well. I, I think the only thing I would add is, I think it's important for us to remind that this is the beginning. So that is a great start. And I'm grateful for the way the committee continues to step up. But there's more information out there. There's more tips out there. And really encouraging folks to step forward, share information, so we can make sure uh, that our officers and our community and our neighborhoods are safe. Where are they being held currently? Is uh, Mr. Jamal being held in Illinois until extradition? Yes, he, he needs to have an initial appearance there and to make sure that we abide by our criminal proceedings, our procedures as far as federal. And Mr. Gerard is being held locally? Yes, he should be locally. And then just how's the officer? I know uh, yesterday we got the great news that he's doing well and his family was there. There were so many people, I mean, I, we were at Grant yesterday. It was great to see. The officer, is my understanding, is doing well. Continue, I would hope the community continues to pour into his recovery. Uh, and in fact, myself and, and Bacher, I understand, and others here may choose to join us to go over and see him even after this, uh, this press conference. So he's doing well, and I know the officer will want the community to, to know that he is very thankful for the community's support and prayers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it.